Wintry transition, not such a big deal. Not in western New York and not in most of the lower 48. I'm meteorologist Don Paul. Welcome to my podcast, Don Paul's Bits O Blather on weather, climate, and occasionally some humor. For some time now, you've been hearing a little bit from me and much more so from some others on social media of a big transition to big time wintry weather returning after the current spring-like conditions, which here in Western New York still have us in their grip today on Friday, where some locations inland from the Lake Erie shore are going to reach or exceed the 60 degree mark. Here in Buffalo, for example, as of Thursday, the monthly mean temperature shows February has been treating us with kid gloves. The mean temperature is 10.2 degrees above average, and that doesn't include Friday's anomaly. We've had only a trace of snow. That means you could see some flakes, but nothing measurable has fallen. Our snowfall deficit is rebuilding after having been cut down to size by one brutal week in January, and it doesn't look like a whole lot of snow is in the forecast for next week either with a limited possible exception closer to the Pennsylvania line. More on that in a moment. In the meantime, during this upcoming weekend, a weak cold front will cross western New York on Saturday, behind which lies some Pacific modified air, not what you'd call true Arctic air. And so from today's 60 or 60 plus degree temperatures, we'll have morning highs in the low 50s with some spotty and scattered showers becoming better organized by late morning near the Pennsylvania line. And then basically a dry afternoon temperatures falling back through the 40s, still well above the average of 32. On Sunday, we'll be in the mid to upper 30s with a partly to mostly cloudy sky and basically dry conditions can't rule out a flurry. And then on Monday, we'll be watching a more important storm system going by to our south. The current guidance on this Friday suggests the main precipitation with that storm will stay below the Pennsylvania line. But an American model, the GFS, does bring some measurable snow up into the southern tier of western New York, especially near the Pennsylvania line, less as you go farther north. There might in this one model be as much as four to six inches in places like Olean and Wellsville, and then much less and essentially inconsequential snow farther north. On the other hand, the latest run of the European and Canadian models show the snow staying south of the state line altogether. So this limited synoptic snow is anything but a lock. And that's it as far as serious snow opportunities go next week. We could see a few light snow showers virtually any day next week, but instead of a return to harsh wintry weather, we'll have temperatures in the low to mid 30s on Tuesday and basically into Friday, close to the average for this time of the year. Compared to what we've got today, yeah, it'll feel cold, but it's not going to be particularly cold by statistical climatological standards. Next weekend, we may turn somewhat colder The polar vortex a week ago looked like it was going to stretch farther south, allowing some true polar air to reach the lower 48. But it now appears the coldest locations will be in the northern plains and that the polar vortex will stretch out more toward the Canadian Maritimes. That would keep its coldest air behind the polar jet stream to our north. So we may get a pretty cold weekend next weekend. No big snow yet showing up in the pattern for next weekend. At least the ski resorts, which in western New York have been snow starved. Even during that big week in January, most of the lake snow was well north of the bigger ski resorts we have here. They'll get a chance to make snow. Definitely good snow making conditions for the resorts so equipped. And then there are signs that even this modest return to normal wintry weather will be somewhat short-lived and we could be seeing temperatures modifying again as early as say the 21st. In the meantime out west, El Nino, which is still strong, is going to help fuel the return of another major stormy pattern to California later next week after having just gone through a devastating storm. And uh, El Nino will begin to weaken during the spring and go back to a neutral status and then transition to La Nina during the summer. 
And that's not necessarily good news because La Nina diminishes disruptive wind shear over the hurricane basin in the Atlantic and allows the potential, when you combine it with lingering oceanic heat that's already in place, with what could be a very active hurricane season in the Atlantic and the Gulf, we'll save that bad news for another episode. Anyway, the return of winter at this point, not looking like a big deal. Thanks for listening this far. Please share. Please follow. We're on all the major podcast platforms.